the introverted intuitive is more difficult because he gets his intuition from the subjective factor, namely the inner world. Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor. As my $150 goal, I said I would dress up as Carl Jung. And here I am right now as Carl Jung, giving my thoughts on introverted intuition. And the truth is, I think I finally understand why introverted intuitives are so unsure of their personality types. I get it. I get the witch hunts against INFJs that have been mistyped. I get why introverted intuition is so difficult. I think a lot of people who look for introverted intuition are scouting for a person with depth and complexity. You're looking for a person that carries themselves with wisdom. And so you get confused by a lot of INFJs and INTJs who don't strike you as wise at all. But now listen here, young gentlemen and gentlewomen. You're not going to find introverted intuition by looking for a person that seems deep. You're going to find introverted intuition in the person that acts and navigates themselves by hunches by intuitions, by possibilities of often a more long-term and profound variety. The introverted intuitive navigates themselves through life through vision, and vision as in a form, a form of uninterrupted monologue, a generally unrehearsed monologue. The introvert intuitive doesn't know where they are going when they start to speak, but they still speak in a way as if they are planning out where they want to end up. They speak as if they have a set direction, but often the introvert intuitive has no idea what that direction is until they reach the end destination. In that sense, introverted intuition is like an original obsession. It's an obsession with a thought or an idea, and a long-term obsession at that, in the sense that this obsession is not just a phase where you read a book and where you cave yourself into a specific subject, but it is when you become the very agent of a vision, of an idea, and where everything you do becomes in relation to this idea, to this hunch, or to this destiny of sorts. The introverted intuitive is concerned with doing something that nobody has done before. The introverted intuitive is concerned with walking a path that nobody has walked before, and so you will see that the introverted intuitive can be divided into the young introverted intuitives who are stumbling and carving out their own path in life, doing things that are outside of the societal norms, outside of the traditional education paradigms, the traditional work paradigms, the traditional norms, the traditional traditions. <laughs> Whatever the introverted intuitive does, they will do it in a way that is unconventional or untraditional. Introverted intuition is a map to Atlantis. You could ask the introverted intuitive to explain where they are going or why they are walking in the way they do, but they won't be able to tell you. The introverted intuitive knows that there is something at their end destination waiting for them, but they don't know necessarily what that is. In many ways, the introverted intuitive walks the destiny of the wanderer archetype in society. Wandering from place to place with no sure destination in sight. The introverted intuitive knows that they are going somewhere with what they are doing, with what they are saying. They know that they have an end goal. And they are trying to figure what, out what that is. The introvert intuitive is a wanderer also in the sense that they are the outsiders from a societal standpoint. Their basis is in the subjective factor, in the subjective imagination. The introvert intuitive has an idea inside of them that has possessed them and their very character. And here's the thing, as an introvert intuitive, if you have an idea, it can be hard to stop yourself from pursuing it. It can be almost impossible. You might try to say, no, I'm not going to pursue it. No, I'm not going to go for my destiny. But you will still feel this tug towards it. To the introvert intuitive, it's this unexplainable tug because you desire it, you 
get your energy from it, you get your inspiration from it, you get your lust from it. Even if you fear that in pursuing it, you might be putting yourself at risk, you might be compromising your own safety, you might be neglecting your own base needs in the pursuit of it. And so there comes a time as an introverted intuitive when you eventually resign to your destiny. Eventually you give up and you realize that you have no choice but to follow it through. You're already in too deep to stop. You can't turn back. There is nothing waiting for you back where you started. And explaining to your friends, to your family members, why you set out on this path, why you started walking, why you ended up pursuing this idea that you can't explain to begin with, is so difficult. You may feel guilty about pursuing it, you may feel bad about leaving your friends behind, as you do. But in reality, you have no choice. The only thing you can do is tell them that you will come back for them, or that they can come with you as long as they don't intrude on or question your path. The thing with introverted intuition for an INFJ or an INTJ is that it is an uninterruptible monologue. It is a thought or a stream of thoughts or a stream of ideas inside of you that have to come out, that you have to eventually see through to the end. And when you are in a monologue, when a monologue is about to start or when you are going into it, it can be short or it can be long, then handling distractions can be difficult. It can be like going into the twilight zone and everyone around you can be like, hello, where did you go? Knock, knock. And there's typically nothing more frustrating to an introvert intuitive as this very event distracts you from your monologue and gets you cut off from it. Your inspiration is lost, your idea is lost, your vision is lost, unless you can see it through. Introverted intuition is, in many ways, manifested as a form of simulation or a simulator mode. A simulated version of reality. Introverted intuition is a stream in the sense that it is... Um, like a movie projection rolling in real time from image to image, from pattern to pattern, from possibility to possibility. You are managing and organizing ideas and connections together. You are molding together what is introverted intuition. Introverted intuition is a synthesis of patterns and of possibilities and complex data. It is an imagined event or scenario. It is an imagined construct of reality in which you can operate on and reflect on possibilities that can come to be. Introverted intuition is hard to explain because it is dealing with possible coming futures. If you knew where you were going, it wouldn't be introverted intuition. It would be introverted sensing. If you had already rehearsed it, it wouldn't be introverted intuition, it would be introverted sensing. If it had something to do with what was happening around you, with everyone else around you, with patterns and possibilities that were tangible, visible, or based on reading behind the lines, or noticing hidden connections around you, then it wouldn't be introverted intuition, it would be extroverted intuition. And that's in part why it's hard for your environment to follow your stream of thought. What you think is completely unrelated to what's happening around you. What you do is completely unrelated to anything anyone else has said or done. And other people will think it has to do with it. They will think that you are doing something because you're angry with them. They will think that you are doing something because you're disappointed or sad. When in reality it's because of a whim or an impulse coming from the inside. Yes, it is true that introverted intuition may have something to do with what other people say and tell you. But only in hindsight. Only after it has been said. Long after, usually. You're only affected by what another person told you after you had time to detach, pick it through and process it. An introverted intuitive needs time to get caught 
wrapped up in your ideas and in other people's lives. When presented with an idea or a possibility, the introvert intuitive needs to detach and synthesize and process the idea before they can give any real judgment or verdict on how it fits together with their main quest or with their path in life. And at the core of it all, introverted intuition as an emotional drive is like a visionary drive. It's the drive of a visionary. The introverted intuitive is a coming visionary or a visionary whose time has come. The introverted intuitive is carrying out an idea, becoming an idea, becoming the representative and servant of an idea. The introverted intuitive sees themselves as enacting and serving and giving life to a possibility that is outside of them. We don't see what we are doing as following our ego. We see our ego as bound to a vision. When healthy, when self-actualized, the introvert intuitive shouldn't have any attachments to themselves or what they get from the idea. It's not about what the idea will give them. It's not about how the idea will fulfill and achieve various means. The introvert intuitive is detached from themselves, from their body and from their physical circumstance. And while in the beginning they might have selfish motivations to start moving towards an idea, eventually they will realize on the journey that it's not about them, it's not about what they do, it's about what the idea offers to the world, what the vision will change for the world. And I want to end with something very important. And that is that what I'm talking about here is not just an introvert that happens to be an intuitive, but an intuitive that happens to be goal-oriented. An intuitive judging type. It is true that an INFP and an INTP will come to relate to a lot of the properties and descriptions of introverted intuitives, simply because they are introverts and intuitives. INTPs and INFPs have the theoretical detachment and the distance of an INFJ or an INTJ, but not the visionary drive of the INFJ or the INTJ. ENFJs and ENTJs have the visionary drive of being an intuitive and judging personality, but they do not have the theoretical detachment from themselves as the INFJ and the INTJ has. This is important to know because traditional perspectives seem to paint the picture that INTPs and INFPs have nothing like introverted intuition, when in reality they have about 50% of what is known as introverted intuition. An INFP or an INTP does not get attached to the ideas in the sense that an INFJ or an INTJ does. The INFJ or the INTJ will have an idea and will get attached to the idea and will feel a sense of responsibility for the idea, where the INTP or the INFP will see the idea but will lack the attachment to the idea and in that lack of attachment they will be able to pick it apart, analyze it and criticize it and twist and turn it creatively like the ENFP and the ENTP. And this is also why INFJs and INTJs can be seen as so skeptical or narrow-minded. Why are they holding an uninterrupted monologue? Well, because they are just so sensitive to distractions. They know that if they start entertaining or listening to an idea, they risk getting sucked up in it. They risk becoming obsessive about it. And as a result, INFJs and INTJs are very careful about what ideas and possibilities they invite into their subjective psyche. The cognitive function known in popular culture as introverted intuition is derived from a person, a character, that happens to have a preference for introversion for the subjective condition and for bringing the subjective condition out to the world. And for intuition, the imagined possibility, the what if, and for judging the goal-oriented attachment to an idea or a possibility in a longer perspective. 
And as I end this video, this is how I want to sum up introverted intuition. Introverted intuition is not something you will experience as deep or profound or smart. It is something you will perceive as unusual, complex and complicated. It is something someone does that from the outsider perspective makes no sense, that has no basis in anything that's happening around them, but that is in so many ways strange or peculiar. Introverted intuition will be found in a monologue, an uninterrupted monologue, in which a person is speaking out and acting as if they know the end destination, end destination of where they are going, without knowing actually where they are going. The introvert intuitive will have an obsession or something they do that envelops their entire life, a passion, a hobby that they have become, that when people think of that hobby or that passion, they think of that person. And yeah, that can be boxing, fishing, philosophy, science, that can be anything. So here is my question for you, as an introvert intuitive, what is your obsession? Where are you headed? Do you experience the pull of introvert intuition of visionary drive? And how do you relate to it? How do you respond to it? How do you see yourself advancing this idea in the future? And let me now end this video with one final question. Has anyone seen my glasses?